So this video is for um, lash lift and brow lamination. So we're going to do this video as if we have just arrived at work. And the first thing that we're going to do when we get to work, all as always, is we are going to um, wash our hands. So we're going to go to the sink and wet our hands, find a liquid, um, coin size amount of liquid hand soap, wet our hands, and then wash our hands down to the wrist. We're going to wash the back of our hands down to the wrist. We're going to wash our fingers, and we're going to wash the back of our fingers. We're going to wash our fingertips and our nails. We're going to wash between our fingers. We're going to wash between our fingers and our thumbs. We're going to wash our thumbs. We're going to wash um, our wrists. And we're going to do all of that interlocking wash for a minimum of 20 to 30 seconds. And we're going to take a really good proper rinse um, once we've done that at the sink underneath the water. And when we feel like everything's been thoroughly rinsed off, we're going to grab either disposable paper towels or clean towels and then turn the faucet off. Dry our hands thoroughly with the towels, throw the towels away. Um, if we use paper towels and then if it's a dirty towel, it's going to go in a closed container um, until time to laundry. And then we're going to get um, our hand sanitizer, 70% ethyl alcohol, and we're going to sanitize our hands. Then we will um, prepare our area for our clients. So we're going to disinfect that workstation, bed, and equipment using a disinfectant wipe following manufacturer's instructions. We're going to check equipment to ensure that all devices are in safe working order and plugged into a working receptacle. We're going to dispense products needed for the service. We will prepare disposable portion cups for each product with a portion of the product by opening the top of the container and ensuring the tip of the nozzle does not come into contact with the disposable portion cup tray or Remove the product with a disinfected or clean single-use spatula. We'll close the lid to the product and set the portion cup tray on the tray. We're going to drape our facial bed using one fitted sheet, one flat sheet, and three towels. We'll place a clean laundered sheet down on the disinfected facial bed, placing a towel horizontally at the head of the bed. We'll lay a hair net and headband on top of the first towel along with a rolled towel to support the head and neck of the client. We'll save the third towel to lay across the client's décolleté. Um, you can also use disposable table paper, but we are doing the sheets version. And then um, we'll have to do our client consultation part. But before we do that, let's just review our um, tray that we have set up. And remember, you always want to do everything you possibly can to prepare before your client arrives so that you are um, expediting their service. You're doing everything as promptly as you can. Um, being very respectful of their time, they're being very respectful of your time, getting everybody on schedule and staying on schedule. So um, you want to have everything ready for your client that you can. So what we've got set up on our tray, we always have all those cotton rounds, um, two by twos, and then four squares. We've got some water, disposable gloves, because of course we'll be wearing gloves for this service. We have our makeup remover, we have our um, perming lotion, lifting lotion, or um, the same thing for the brow, and then of course our neutralizing lotion. Um, we have our wax for the brow part. We've got our glue that is going to help um, the lash lift before we do any of that. Same with our, it will be lifting our brow up. Um, we of course have our rods for our lash lift and our special tool for that. Um, we have our eye pads that we're going to disposable that we have to put underneath the client's eyes. Of course, we have that nice barrier um, repair cream, something like a petroleum jelly that you would put around the brow and underneath the eye as well before you put the eye pads on. We've got wooden stick Q-tips. We've got brushes that I'm going to be using to apply that um, uh, perming solution, lifting lotion, and the neutralizing to the lashes. And then I've got these little tiny little rods that I'm going to be using for my brow, as well as a Y comb, um, just little implements and tools that we need for um, our brows um, and our lashes. So it's all set up and ready to go. I'm just waiting for our client to arrive so that we can do the client consultation part. So we're gonna review the client consultation part, keeping in mind that when we do do our client consultation, of course, we are always approaching our client with clean hands when we talk to them. Um, of course, I'm going to wash my hands again and put my gloves on before I start performing the service. But I do want you to note that I would never greet my client without properly washed and sanitized hands. So 
we will go and get our client who's arrived and we're going to escort them to the work area. We will assess the client's current style and determine the client's preferences. Um, one note here is that the client has already been given information before she arrives if she's going to have a service like this done because when you have a lash lift done um, or a brow lift, brow lamination, there will be certain requirements um, based on the manufacturer's directions as far as um, getting them wet. So she's going to know what um, she needs to do before and after. Of course, you're going to review that with your client, but they need to be provided with information about um, pre and post in order for the service to last. You don't want them to pay for a service and then um, do something that would then um, negate the service. So for uh, just making sure that you're sharing all the proper protocol before and after, and we have. So continuing on here, um, we're gonna assess the client's needs and the client's skin by performing a skin analysis to ensure that there is no inflamed, infected, broken, raised, or swollen skin in the area to be worked on or an open wound or sore in the area to be worked on, infection or infestation, for example, lice, to prevent from safely performing the service. We'll assess the client's consultation form for any medications and products used within the last 72 hours, consult on any known allergies, we'll consult with the client on any facial surgeries within the last three months and if the client's under a physician's care, We'll assess if the client is prone to cold sores or fever blisters. We'll assess if the client has been using exfoliating or lightening agents, or has used rather exfoliating or lightening agents within the last 72 hours, like alpha hydroxy acids, beta hydroxy acids, hydroquinone, etc. We will assess, assess facial injections within the last three weeks, like Botox or hyaluronic fillers. If the client is free from any of those contraindications, we can move forward with the procedure. And all that's important because it all affects the skin and um, its reactions or responses to anything that you do to it. And it's your job as the professional to make sure that your client um, does not have any adverse reactions to anything that you're using. So you definitely wanna be checking ingredients um, based on their allergies, etc. And that's why you're very specific about um, super specific about what they're using, taking, what they've put on their skin, etc. So now you obviously would want to um, get the client comfortable and they don't have to disrobe for this service. They just need to simply get down um, and rest on the facial bed so you can go in with them to get them prepared. So what you're going to want to do is get them comfortably on the facial bed and then you've got, of course, that roll towel right here that you're going to place under their neck for additional comfort. You've got an extra towel that we're just going to drape up over their neck or clothing just to make sure nothing gets on them. And then um, just got a couple little things here that I'm going to put to the side that I'm going to be trying to, for my mannequin, to help, hopefully help the little rod adhere to her lid. I'm going to try something different today to see if it will work. So I'm going to put her hairnet on now and I just wanted to have that out of the way. Um, basically what you're trying to do here is making sure that the hair is going to stay out of the way of the brow and the lash area. So you could use a headband or a hairnet, whatever works best for you. And um, then I'm going to wash my hands to get ready to perform the service. So I would go to the sink, wet my hands, and then get that coin size liquid hand soap. I'm going to wash my hands down to the wrist. Then I'm going to wash the back of my hands down to the wrist. I'm going to wash the, my fingers, and I'm going to wash the back of my fingers. I'm going to wash my fingertips and my nails. I'm going to wash between my fingers. I'm gonna wash between my fingers and my thumbs. I'm going to wash my thumbs. And I'm going to wash my wrists. I'm going to do all of that interlocking, washing. Um, for a minimum of 20 to 30 seconds and then I'm going to rinse everything thoroughly under that water. Once I feel like it's properly rinsed, I'm going to get disposable paper towels or a towel to turn the faucet off, dry my hands completely, throw the paper towels in the trash. If I used the towel, it's now dirty and it would go in a closed container until time to be laundered. Finding my hand sanitizer, 70% ethyl alcohol, finishing with hand sanitizer. And I want to get my hands super dry because I'm going to be applying gloves.
And before I put my gloves on, I'm just going to um, uh, identify the size of the roller that I want to use for my uh, the lash section. And I think I'm going to use this medium one here, this smaller one. Let's see if it works a little bit better than that bigger one. Now I'm going to go ahead and put my um, gloves on. And then, of course, what we're going to do is we're going to set ourselves up for success. And we're going to have to take off makeup and then put on our protective things. So that's the first thing that I'm going to do. I'm just going to um, apply some makeup remover with cotton rounds to the eyes. Let it soak there for a minute. And then I'm, while I'm cleaning the brow off. And now I'm going to go ahead and remove any makeup that might be on the brow or around the brow area for that matter. So I'm going to work with the direction of that hair growth and then I'm also going to go back. Just in case they have any makeup, moisturizer, any oil or residue, I'm going to go ahead and just take all that off and get the other brow done here. And then I'm going to do the eye makeup. And you know, just do what you need to do to remove it all. Some people wear a little bit more, of course. Some people wear a little less. And I'm going to dry the area really thoroughly, actually, before I put on that barrier cream. And then I am going to do just that. I'm going to apply that cream underneath the eye and underneath and around the brow, just underneath that brow, so just to protect everything. Just a nice little thin layer that'll help the uh, um, under eye pad adhere a little bit better too. And one thing to note is that you are going to be um, covering up the lower lashes as well with that iPad. And the reason for that is um, you are lifting just the upper lash. So we really want to protect the lower lash line. Just going kind of way above the brow and then a little bit underneath it. Okay. So we're gonna put our eye pads on. So remember, you're gonna have your client look up and you're gonna take it all the way up and you're gonna cover up that lower lash line gently and then just press that. iPad down and it will stay there for you and you want to get as close covering up those lashes as you possibly can
going to take my mascara one for a second here and just comb these lashes, just taking a look at them. And my client's lashes are a little shorter. So we're going to see how this plays out. So I've got these little stickers here um, that are not traditionally in our videos. So just bear with me for a second and I'm going to put these stickers on. Um, as if this isn't happening. What we would be doing is putting a little drop or two of the lash lifting kind of glue before that we glue the lashes to the rod with. You would put that underneath the rod on the client's lid, but because this is not a human, trying to find a way to make these rods stick to the client, so I've just got a little bit of double-sided tape in the hopes that this will help. Um, I just didn't want to get it wet when we were doing the cleansing of the eye. So I'm um, really doing something here that I would not be doing normally during this procedure with a client. So just pretend like this is when I'm taking just a teeny bit of glue um, from the lash lifting glue and that um, to make the rod, help the rod adhere. So we're, instead of putting this on, I would be putting on the glue. Now let me put my gloves back on. So the gloves would have never come off. This is just a mock video situation so I am trying to make these little rods adhere so I can actually get through this procedure. So now what I'm going to do is I would pretend like I would take a little bit of this glue on the back of the rod and I would be applying it close to my client's lash line as a possible and I'm, I'm going to press and hold for like five to ten seconds and I'm hoping that little double-sided tape there is going to be my friend and help it stick. It worked I think. Better not speak that out loud, huh? Other side. And I've tried this before, but I did it and wet the, you know, did the eye cleanse part, um, just having them on, the sticky on before I started the video, and it just then negates the sticky, which means it won't work. So I'm hoping that this actually will work even though we have to kind of stop and do something that I would never do in service. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna be applying the glue and I'm gonna use my little tool to um, get the lashes to then curl up on the rod. So I'm gonna apply a little bit of my glue, um, lash lifting glue to the rod and then I'm gonna take my time to have it um, there for me to then get the lashes lifted. And this is just a process of getting it up on the rod. And sticking to the glue. While the glue is drying. And while this is happening, you really want to keep the lashes separate um, because however they glue to the rod will be exactly how they stay once they're lifted. So you really want to take a moment to separate them and comb them um, in that upward direction that you're going for during the lift um, and not clumping together, etc. So that way you get the proper look you are going for when you do get them lifted. Because however they glue is however they're gonna look when they're lifted. And you're just gonna go one at a time. I mean, that's it's just a little 
bit of a process. It does take time um, to achieve these results that they're really going for. So one side is glued and now we're going to the other side to get them glued and then we'll be able to move forward with the next part. It just takes that time to get everything on the way that you want it to be on. And I am 100% taking my time with this glue to line everything up. So it doesn't look really, really weird when we give that lash lift to these lashes and they're not going all different directions. They're going exactly the way we want them to go and that happens right now when they're being um, placed on the rod. Almost guys, almost. It's just this, it's a very like step-by-step um, -step tedious process like anything. And um, the attention to detail, this is where it's gonna matter.
Okay. Perfect. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just take a little sip of water here for one second. <clears throat> Okay, so once your lashes are on the rod, what you need to do is then apply the um, lifting lotion. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply it with a brush and we are going to avoid the top, so we're gonna take it three quarters of the way up. We're gonna avoid the top quarter because um, that's the weakest part of the lash right now. So what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we gently apply it and um, we concentrate really on the root um, where it's the newest part of the growth and it's really gonna be um, affecting the lift and we're protecting that weak, thin part at the end of the lash that's the slough off part, the part that's getting ready to come off anyway. Um, we are going to avoid that part. So the most important part that we place it is that base and then mid, uh, and then uh, stopping three quarters of the way up. We've got one down, so we're gonna go to the other side now. Same thing applies here, focusing on the base of the lash and then working my way up halfway and then to that three quarter point and stopping there so that we do not in any way harm the weak part of the lash. Once again, it's just taking that, taking our time here to taking that moment to be a, every little attention to detail. And then um, we're going to um, go ahead and cover our, the eyes of our client. And allow it to process. So it's going to process according to manufacturer's directions, but we are going to let it sit here for five to 10 minutes. Now we're not really gonna let it sit here for five to 10 minutes. Um, we're, we're just saying that because we're just doing a video. So we're gonna pretend as if five to 10 minutes has elapsed and we will then take um, her little protection off of her eyes where she was just resting there for that time um, line that we needed. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this um, lash lifting lotion, and I'm gonna do it with a first a dry remove and then a nice damp remove. Nothing soaking wet, we're always avoiding the eye area in, you know, we've got, that's one of the reasons we have our cotton pad and our protection. So I'm just gonna go really gently here with that dry remove. hit the other side as well and then we're going to go in with a damp just a damp being really gentle I'm always checking in with my clients comfort level I'm um, also, um, because you know anytime you're there with your eyes closed, it can be a little daunting. So I'm checking in, I'm making sure she's okay, she's fine. Um, now I'm gonna go with that damp. 
real gentle. Both sides. And now I'm gonna um, apply setting lotion to her um, lashes and I'm gonna use a different brush for that. Another word might be a neutralizing lotion. Do that for both eyes. And then once again, I'm going to give her um, a minute here with that relaxing comfort of eye uh, coverage. Just giving it a little cover and then a little towel cover. And then we're following manufacturer's instructions and that setting lotion is going to sit for five minutes. So um, we are um, obviously not going to sit here for the five minutes because we've got our video but just pretend as if that five minutes has elapsed and then I'm gonna do exactly the same thing here um, where I am going to um, do that nice dry remove, then I'm gonna do my damp remove and then I'll be able to slide the pads off and remove the lashes from the rod. So what I'm gonna do first is give it a nice little dry press, of course being very gentle around the eye area as we always are. as we always, always, always are. And then we're gonna go back in here in just a second with the dry. And now we're going back with our damp. going um, gently and of course pressing it upward towards the uh, top of this rod and then we'll hit the other side then we're gonna go in and with a little bit more water to get the uh, um, lashes to separate from that rod Just nice and hydrated, but gently, of course, we don't want anything to get into that eye area. Just the whole point of being nice and gentle. With some water now on the end of a Q-tip, just gently helping them release from the rod. That water doing it there for you.
then you can, as the lashes start to come away from the rod, you will be able to remove the rod and you'll also be able to um, slide that iPad off gently because you're going to be able to discard that and then you're going to go towards your other rod and finish over here. Of course you're having your client just keep their eyes closed which they will know that until you tell them to open it. Please do not. So as I remove this rod from the eye, I am also going to then take away the um, iPad that we can easily discard in the trash. And then I'm just going to take a second here to remove that um, underneath the lash wear, that barrier cream. And I'm going to have to comb through her lashes with the mascara wand because there's a lot of that lash glue in hers. And that's not the case for necessarily for um, a traditional person. It's dealing with a mannequin with not real lashes and not the product that we use and it doesn't function. I obviously did not use uh, the lash lifting solution or the um, neutralizing solution. So I'm also going to take off these little pieces of tape. So that's going to make the everything work and function differently because we don't have the right product and they, we don't have lashes that are human lashes. So I'm just going to comb through here um, on her lashes and try to get some of this glue out, which seems to be working a little bit with a mascara wand, a disposable mascara wand. And I would want to comb through my client's lashes anyway after they've had a nice lash lift just to see how gorgeous everything is before I present. Now she's going to keep her eyes closed for a while because we still have to do her brow lift. Just letting these lashes look gorgeous as they are. Just a little frustrating because the product gets stuck in these, whatever these are that I'm working with here. And I try not to get frustrated, but I do. But I would do whatever it took for the client, just like I'm doing whatever it's gonna take for my mannequin who's so patient and lets me do 8 million videos on her. As if she has a choice, she's a mannequin, but. And same thing on the other side, I'm combing through the glue because there's a lot. And it's maybe that it's the cholesterol adhering to the glue. So it makes a new kind of a chemical reaction. I'm not really sure, but it does leave a lot of a residue that I'm trying to remove. It's unfortunate. Almost. So once you've finished with your lash lift that really looks amazing as we are doing it in the real world for our client who is in love with it, we will um, get to present it to her in a minute. We've got to do our brow lamination next. So we have um, prepared our brow area for safety and I'm going to walk you through this um, here with my brow, pretending as if this was her brow. So, um, I'm gonna pretend flip it over that way just so you can kind of see like brow hair, brow shape. I wonder if I can bring it in. But 
um, I just flipped it over. So we've got a brow here and what we're gonna do is we would have this, we've already taken off any makeup or residue that might have been on her brow and um, let it dry. And what we would do now is we would take our gorgeous Y comb with some of that bonding agent. We'd put a little bit on it and we would be combing that uh, up and out. Um, and we would be very precise and we would be taking our time to do this just like we did with um, when we put on the rod with the lashes and we glued them down with the bonding agent and then we combed them up on the rod. When we have this bonding agent here, it's the time that we wanna make sure that we put them in exactly the shape, um, comb the brown exactly the shape that they, we want them to be. So I'm gonna pretend like I'm doing the same thing for the other side with the brow. I've got my brow, I've got a little bit of that bonding agent, I'm using my Y comb and I'm combing it up and out um, according to that lift that I want it to want to give the brow and um, by doing that with this little Y comb and a little bonding agent what I'm going to do is I'm going to be um, getting it set up to be um, laminated in that position. So we are ready because we've done both brows and we've combed them up and out in the way that we want them to look, we are now ready to move forward. And what we would do at this point is um, we would be following manufacturer's directions, but we're gonna be using our, um, once again, that um, essentially your perming solution or your um, lifting solution for the brow and what you're going to do is follow manufacturer's direction. So we're just going to give you a guideline of what some things say here for application. For fine brow, you may want to leave it on for three to four minutes. For a fine or and or tinted brow, like a fine tinted brow, maybe four to five. For a natural healthy brow, five to six minutes. And then that coarse healthy brow, maybe six to seven minutes. So different times based on the type of brow hair that you're working with and also manufacturer's directions. And we've got one of these teeny little nice little combs here that we're gonna take some of this solution and we're going to apply it to the brow in the direction that we've just bonded it to the, the way it is. And we're gonna be taking it from the base of the brow and we're also gonna take it up to that three quarter point. We are not taking it to the tip of the brow where it's weakest but we're using this nice little teeny little like micro fine brush here to do that to apply it and we are starting at the root combing upward stopping three quarters of the way up just like we did for the lashes with this similar type of a product obviously it's a different product but it's it the goal is exactly the same And we would do the same for both brows. So I'm going to do some over here on this brow as well, taking it up from the base, going up three quarters of the way. And remember, it's been bonded in the direction that we want it to be at finish. So we're just simply starting at the base of the brow, combing it up three quarters of the way, all the way through the brow. And we would, um, be following those timelines based on the kind of brow hair that she has. And her brow hair, <clears throat> excuse me, is kind of fine, but not super fine, maybe fine and tinted. So we're gonna say four to five minutes for her brow, and then it would be time to remove it. So I'm gonna do a little dry and then a little damp before we go on to the next um, section. So I'm gonna take um, a little cotton here, I'm gonna press and I'm gonna remove it dry first. Of course, I'm avoiding that eye area. I'm being really gentle when I remove it. And then we're going to do it damp. A 
Always being mindful of how and where you're doing it. And we've got all of that gone. And now we will be going into the second step, which of course would be the um, um, neutralizing lotion. And we would get another one of those little teeny little guys. And we're gonna apply to the brow, same direction, um, that neutralizing lotion. And, um, you know, just being very mindful that it's that eye area we're working around. We're always conscientious to be um, very precise. That's why we have these tiny little tools so we don't get stuff everywhere and we just are working in that tiny little area that's the eyebrow right now to achieve that look that she's going for. So I'm applying it from the base exactly as I applied the other. And of course, um, it's just based on manufacturer's directions. Again, we're going to talk about that in just a minute on how, what, why, and all the other things that matter when applying this neutralizing lotion. Of course, combing it, how we've combed it up with that Y comb, how we've bonded it up, applying it that way all the way down to the end. And then we would also follow manufacturer's directions on a timeline for this, so how long it's gonna sit there. So for very fine, finer tinted hair, five minutes. For natural, healthy, or that coarse hair, um, we're gonna say six minutes. So we know we're in that natural, fine tinted range, so five minutes would be the length of time that you would leave this on. So five minutes have, have elapsed in our video land, let's say. So let's remove this and we're gonna start with a dry remove for um, the neutralizing lotion. We're gonna do that right now. Just a little light press. And then we're gonna go back and do the final remove with something damp. We're just, it's easy if you can press some of that off while it's dry, and then we're gonna go back now with a little damp. Damp, 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 and then we have one little step to finish um, the brows, that's important. Going back with some damp, making sure we're getting all that neutralizing lotion off the brow. And um, last but not least, um, we are going to apply our um, like waxing beauty shine um, to finish up this brow. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna got one of our little guysies here and we're gonna comb and apply and it's gonna put a beautiful sheen on the um, brow that we have just lifted and laminated um, so that it looks just gorgeous. And of course we took a before shot and we'll have an after shot for the lift and the uh, lash lift and the brow. Um, lamination. Same thing on the other side. We're combing this gorgeous shiny wax um, right into that brow so that when we take that after picture, it's like a million bucks and everybody's going to want to come in and get theirs done because she just looks so great. Which is exactly what she wanted to come in for. Oh yeah. Mmm. Hmm, brow, lashes, I mean like a superstar right here. So we are going to get our mirror and present to the client because she just cannot wait to see the results. So um, you can grab your mirror, you can present to her the results of her lash lift and her brow lamination, and then you did not have to um, 
have her um, disrobe or change anything. So you can gently, once she's like, oh my gosh, I love it, because she will be, you can gently um, remove that towel and the hairnet and um, she will get up and get her things and you guys can go to the client um, waiting area and you're obviously gonna take off these disposable gloves and discard them and then this is where it does take a minute because you do want to make sure you review in detail um, any uh, maintenance or aftercare that you wanna go over and obviously each manufacturer will have specification, specifications about what they would recommend for that um, but it's super important like for your lash lift, etc. There's a certain amount of time that you don't want to get those lashes wet. You've got all that stuff to worry about with her. So you're going to grow, go over all of that. And then you're obviously going to tell her your recommendations for, um, a follow-up service, like when she should come in, how often, what she should expect to see, when she should expect to see a change. Um, and then you're going to get her checked out and then you'll, and book for her next appointment. And then it is time for, um, prep for the next client. So you've got another person coming in for a lash lift. So you need to get back to that room and you're gonna discard any single use items that you haven't already, like those little wands or um, wooden stick Q-tips, gloves, whatever it is, you're gonna toss it. All of the implements that you use, like your brushes and your tools for the lash lift, you're gonna put your little um, rods, etc in a closed container um, labeled to be disinfected. All of your towels, your bedding, um, will be also put in a closed container until it's time for laundry. Then you need to identify a proper cleansing agent. You're gonna read um, the manufacturer's directions and follow them for mixing and usage. You'll wipe down your workstation and area with the cleaning solution to remove any debris. And then you'll identify a um, disinfectant that is bactericidal, virucidal, and fungicidal, and EPA approved for use in a salon setting. You will have to put on some disposable gloves, again, another pair, because you're gonna read and um, follow manufacturer's directions for mixing and or using appropriate aerosol disinfectant. You're gonna disinfect electrical equipment, store it in a clean area separate from other implements, and then you'll get to discard those disposable gloves. And it's time for a hand wash before you set up for your next client. So you'll go to the sink, wet your hands, Get that coin-sized liquid hand soap. You're gonna wash your hands down to your wrist. You're gonna wash the back of your hands down to your wrist. You're gonna wash your fingers and you're gonna wash the back of your fingers. You're gonna wash between your fingers. You're gonna wash between your fingers and your thumbs. You're gonna wash your fingertips and nails. You're gonna wash your thumbs and you're gonna wash your wrist. And you're gonna do all of that proper wash um, for a minimum of 20 to 30 seconds. And then you're gonna thoroughly rinse your hands at the sink um, and then you feel like you've gotten them properly rinsed, you'll find either disposable paper towels or a towel to turn the faucet off. You're gonna dry your hands off completely and you're gonna place disposable paper towels in the trash. A dirty towel will then go into a closed container with the lid um, until it's time to do laundry. Last step of the hand wash is get your hand sanitizer. It must be at least 70% ethyl alcohol and you will then apply the sanitizer to your hands and sanitize your hands. And you will do all of the same things with the hand sanitizer on your hands that you did with the cleanser. Once you have um, finished sanitizing, you can then begin the proper setup for your next client. So that concludes the video for lash lift and brow lamination.